Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on creating custom collection view layouts. Up until this point in the series, we've been using random data to size our cells. But now we're going to move on to using some real data and to display some real photos. We're going to use a little known but incredibly useful function found in the AV Foundation framework that will allow us to properly calculate the height of the photos whilst restricting the width to the column width and maintaining the aspect ratio and then we'll use this to properly size our cells. You'll also begin to flesh out the annotation by adding a label that will display the caption of each photo. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. You can see that we're now displaying photos and that those photos are correctly sized to fit within the width of each column while still maintaining the correct aspect ratio. The height of each photo is directly affecting the height of the cells, but the annotation remains fixed at 60 points. And you can start to see that we're now really close to completing our Pinterest inspired custom layout. So up until this point in the series, we've been using some randomly generated values as a height for our photos. But as I mentioned earlier, in this episode, we're going to start displaying real photos. And as such, we're going to base the height of our cells on the height of those photos, just like the real Pinterest app does. You've already updated your custom delegate protocol so that you can request the height of the photo and the annotation separately. So now it's time to update the implementation. You'll first retrieve the photo that corresponds to the given collection view cell. You'll then scale it whilst restricting it to the overall width of the column and maintaining the original aspect ratio of the photo. The resulting height will be passed back to the layout where it will be used to calculate the overall frame of the cell before being passed on to the cell itself where it can be used to set the appropriate height on the image view that will ultimately end up displaying the photo. Now you might think that we're going to have to write some fairly complex code to handle this image scaling, but luckily for us, Apple has our back. AV make rect with aspect ratio inside rect is a function found in the AV foundation framework and it returns a scaled rect which fits within the bounding rect you provide whilst also maintaining the aspect ratio you provide, which makes it a perfect fit when you want to scale some photos. In the context of our Pinterest layout, the aspect ratio will be the height and the width of the original photo, and the bounding rect will use the column width as a width and max flow as a height. Since we want this function to calculate the proper height, what we pass as the height is almost irrelevant. We just need to make sure it's larger than column width, which is why using max flow is a safe bet. So if we build and run the sample, you'll remember that from the last video, we've got our cells set up and we've got proportionately sized image views and spaces for the annotation, which will include the comment and the caption. But what we actually really need to do is size the image view based on the size of the photo it's going to display. And this has to be done appropriately so that the aspect ratio of the image is preserved. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a method from AV Foundation. So if you want to stop the sample app running and open Photo Stream View Controller, and then at the top underneath the existing import, just import a v foundation and then we scroll down to height for photo at index path and delete the code that's currently in there because we're no longer going to be using random values and instead we're going to use av make rect with aspect ratio inside rect to calculate a rect that is proportionately sized for the image we're going to display and then we're going to return the height for that so first we need to get the photo from the photos array so we know we're dealing with the correct photo so that's index path the item and then we're just going to create a bounding rect which is the rect that we're going to pass to this method and we're going to set it up with a 0x a 0y 
the width is going to be the width that's passed into this method. So that's the constraint width. And the height, we're just going to use CG float and then we're going to use max float. And basically, we're using max float because we want the method from AV Foundation to work out the height given the constraint width. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to do let rect equals AV make rect with aspect ratio inside rect. And the aspect ratio is going to be the photo dot image dot size. And the bounding rect is going to be the bounding rect that we've just created. And then we'll simply return the height of that rect. Now, if we build and run, you'll see we're getting really close now because these image views are now sized proportionately based on their width to house the photos that they're going to display. So if we stop, jump back to Xcode. If we find cell for item at index path, and we're going to change the cast here from UI collection view cell to annotated photo cell which is our UI collection view cell subclass. And then we can set the photo on that cell to the correct photo using index path to item. And now if we build and run again, you'll see we've now got our photos. And these are all, as I said, proportionately sized and the cells themselves are sized based on that proportion. So what we want to do next is we want to display the caption for these photos in the annotation area. So if we stop the app from running and open the storyboard. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to find our rounded corners view. and We want to change the background color to green. And then we want to drag a label into that area. We're going to give it the placeholder text of caption and we're going to change the font to a custom font which will be Avenir next and we're going to change it to demi bold so it's a little bit thicker and then we're going to change the size to 12 and then we're going to add some constraints to that label and we're going to position it four from the top and the left and the right and then we're going to set the height to 17 and we can update the frames and that gives us a nice caption. We then need to jump over to our annotated photo cell subclass and we're just going to add a new outlet so we can just copy and paste the first part of the declaration and this will be caption label and it'll be an instance of UI label and then in our setter for the photo just below where we set the image, we can then set the text on the caption label to the photo dot caption. And then the last thing we need to do is jump back into the storyboard, right click on our photo cell and hook up the outlet. And then if we build and run, you'll see we've now got all the captions set up. And that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. The annotation area of each cell should display both a caption and a comment. But so far, you've only implemented the former. So your challenge this time is to add a comment to the annotation area of each cell. But don't be misled, because it's not as easy as it might first appear. Naturally, some comments are longer than the others, and the comment label should take into account the size of the entire comment so that the text doesn't truncate. This will obviously have a knock-on effect to the size of the annotation area, as well as the overall size of the cell itself. And it's definitely something that should be taken into account when calculating the layout. As always, you can find all the details in the challenge document, but do be sure to give it a go yourself before reaching for the solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again next time.